Hello, welcome to Serenity Productions. Top shelf. N no, the, the other one. <laughs> the other, other one. <laughs> Uh, blue cover? No, that's black. <laughs> Trust me, that's black. Wait, your your hand was just over it. Yeah, that one. Okay, <laughs> thank you. My my uncle's uh, taller than me and set up this entire shop, so he kind of made everything higher up. <laughs> I could just use magic to get it, but I'm not gonna use my powers for just anything and everything. Powers are meant to be used with respect and responsibility. I'm a Wicca, not a Fae. Yeah, there's... There's a big difference. And, uh... I'm not gonna get into that right now. Let's just say I've uh, had a few bad experiences with Faye, and I'm not particularly a fan of them. <laughs> okay, now let's see if we can look through here for what we need. Sorry, I haven't had to do one of these in a while. Um, around five years ago. And when you don't do something for that long, you can be out of practice. Thanks, by the way, for helping out with the rush earlier. I can't believe I double booked readings and potion pickups. No, it's it, it's not because you're here. I, I should double check my schedule. Usually I'm much better about it. <laughs> like I said, don't worry about it. I made sure to check the schedule tomorrow to make sure everything is set up correctly. I don't want to have another hectic time. Though, you seem to manage that with me just fine. <laughs> Did you work retail in a past life? Ah, so then you understand the uh, hecticness that sometimes comes with, you know, busy times. Oh, don't even get me started on the holidays. The winter solstice is like the worst time here. People want potions and readings and... Ugh. That and Valentine's Day for some reason. Everyone comes in for a reading thinking they're gonna find the one or their mate or something or other. Honestly, readings can be exact and as a seer, I do specialize in them. But wouldn't you want to rather want that to be like... I don't know, a surprise? Exactly. <laughs> See, you and I are on the same wavelength with that. <laughs> By the way, have you remembered anything else from that night? It's okay. Sometimes spirits never get their full memories back. Even when they're about to move on. Just happen sometimes. <laughs> Don't stress yourself out about it, okay? We'll figure it out. Until then, you can just hang out here. Is the spare bedroom to your liking? Good. <laughs> oh yeah, bathroom in that room is so nice. I helped to design it, actually. Right? Waterfall showers are just the best to relax in. Uncle and I are gonna try to do our bathroom the same way. Need to save up a bit first, though. <laughs> oh yeah, these books can go back. Thanks. <laughs> oh, you noticed that, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's not Latin. Though most spells involve Latin nowadays, it makes it easier for those of us born on the mundane to connect with the magic of the ethereal. Latin is the closest to their language. Though it's not exact, and only in pronunciation. 
Spelling, on the other hand, is a whole nother story. <laughs> well, most Wiccans learn about the ethereal language from a young age. It takes a lot of work, and most just forget it. Latin does a trick, so why remember a complex language that only applies to when you're trying to read it? Yeah. Oh, um, it's called runic. It's hard to read, and it's a combination of symbols that means words mixed with other symbols to make more words, then strung together to make a sentence. Don't worry, you won't have to learn it. <laughs> Oh yeah, here. Take a look. Yeah, they are very beautiful. And powerful. If you write a rune down with intent, it can have power behind it. A lot of the employees at the pen have these as tattoos for protection and access to portals. Especially the human ones. It allows them to access some magic, like their portals and ways to get around. In fact, you can't actually get into the building without a certain ruin. It's kind of like an employee badge. The ruins are one way. Um, but that's mostly for humans. Fays are just naturally attuned with the magic of the ethereal. And us Wiccans have affinities in our blood for certain magics. Um, and then... Regular humans, like I said, can have a wick and place a ruin on them to help them access the magics. Of course there's a catch. Magic is always an exchange. You don't get something without giving something up. For Fae, it's energy and mortality. As well as morals. <laughs> For Wiccans, it's sometimes blood, or we have to use things from nature or part of our body, like a piece of hair. For humans, it's their soul. The ruins that humans use attaches to their soul. It's a very dangerous process. Sometimes the soul doesn't even take the ruin, and it just... And then if someone gets too many, it could tear their soul apart and they could become a soulless. No, oh, right, sorry. Soulless. Uh, they're like our version of the boogeyman. People who have lost their souls. N no, you don't die when you lose your soul, you... You... Hmm... It's actually kind of complicated, but usually it ends up in you being banished to Hellion. Kind of like Hell, but less fire and more... nothing. You just exist in endless... nothing. Yeah, it's a scary thought. But again, you have to lose your soul for that to happen. Or you have to be born of there. No, no. Um, demons are not of Hellion. Demons have souls. Yeah, there are, there are demons, but they're not demons, like from the Bible or something. They're their own race with their own culture and hierarchy. Uh, but that's a lesson for another day. In fact, we've gotten way off course. <laughs> Um, what we are looking for is, uh... Oh, here we go. It's a spell that will help you exit that body. And tie you to something else until we figure out a more permanent solution to you moving on. And it's gonna involve someone a lot more powerful than I am. Well, we can tie you to a lot of things. A book, a ring, the shop itself just you won't have a body you'll be a floating ghost yeah like casper except less round
Well, yes, that's really the only way to do it. We want to get that human you're using as a taxi back to their normal life. I mean, technically, yes, but that traditionally requires making a golem, which takes a lot more magical abilities and probably a fae or two to help us. But you probably don't want to get a fae involved. They rarely help out anyone without asking for something substantial in return. <laughs> if there's one thing you remember, fae are not cute little fairies. Get any idea of Tinkerbell out of your head. They are vicious to a point, and will try everything in their power to get what they want out of anyone. They're selfish, and only care about themselves. Yeah, that is partly from my experience. But it's also a known fact. They aren't evil, they... They're just not... They're not exactly the nicest beings in the world. Can I ask why you would want to try the golem idea? You know, you don't need to be physical to find out what happened to you, and for you to move on. You can kind of just float around here and relax. <laughs> Okay, that's, that's a fair point. Hey, 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 no, you don't have to help out around the shop. This is not a, you're helping, so you have to help us out sort of deal. Well, we just try to be good people. There are not enough of them in the world, so my uncle and I try to be the best Wiccas we can. Well, if you're that adamant about helping, maybe we can try it. It would take a few weeks to even find someone to try and attempt that. Unless... Unless we try a more modern approach. I mean, it's a little risky, but I think the basic concept should apply. Yeah, give me a moment. Yeah, everything is fine. You're coming home tomorrow, right? Awesome. Um, but really quick. Does Jenna still have that mock cadaver? Yeah, the one that looks really lifelike. Yeah. Um, I was thinking, uh, Gollum, but not Gollum? I mean, we could always use magic to fix it up a little bit, right? Okay, do you think she would mind parting ways with it? Um, our friend here brought it up. Uh, they would really like to be physical and stick around. Uh, really being stubborn about helping around the shop. Oh, I already gave them that. Yep, they're a stubborn one. Well, I figured a cadaver might be cheaper than trying to summon a golem, and we don't have to get a fae involved. Not to mention, if the new modern way works, well then... You know, maybe we could do it as a side business? Oh, anything to stick it to that frickin' fae down the way. Jesus. Oh, I'm a fae. I can make a golem. You don't want to go to the Wiccans. Ugh. I know, I know. I'm sorry. I'm being petty. But still. Maybe? I, 
I know it might not work because it's not a magical construct, but I mean, it can't hurt to try, right? People use weirder things for possessions. Remember the doll. Exactly. So, same concept with hopefully less terrifying consequences. Awesome. Oh, you're the best. Okay, then see you tomorrow. And tell Jenna a big thanks for me. I owe her a read. Okay, I love you too. Safe trip. Bye. So, instead of a golem, we're gonna try a cadaver one of our friends tried to use for a summoning spell. It might look a little funny at first, but my uncle's really good at transfiguration spells, so we should be fine. He's an illusion wicked. So, should be good there. <laughs> Well, it's risky because we've never tried it before. But if we can tie you to the house, we should be able to tie you to the cadaver in a way that you can still control it, like a golem. Again, this is all theory and it could go very, very poorly. Would you be willing to try still? If it doesn't work, we'll look for someone to help us solve the golem. End of story. All right. Then tomorrow, we get you ready for a new body. Tonight, though, how about we get some pizza? <laughs> I'm starving.